Hello, and thank you for joining us for our health education program on food and aging. My name is Alyssa Gailey, and I'm a registered dietitian, and today I will be presenting the program. After I present the program, we will be having a short cooking demo, and then we will come back together for any questions that you might have. So let's get started. You often hear that eating healthy is extremely important as you age, but you seldom hear about what but what you seldom hear about is all of the changes that take place in your body and how those changes can affect your food choices. Healthy eating is important for everyone, but you may need to be even more mindful of what you eat as you get older. During this class, you'll learn why healthy eating changes as you age, the top three changes that affect the way you eat some tips to overcome these changes so you can continue to make healthy choices. You may have heard the say, saying, you are what you eat. If you believe this to be true and you want to try to age well, then perhaps you may want to try to eat well. There are many changes that may affect the way you eat as you get older. These changes may include living alone, Managing health conditions like diabetes, food not tasting as good, or not being able to eat as much due to weight gain. Remember the good news is that you can still make healthy choices in spite of these changes. You just have to learn how to work around them. The first big change I want to talk about is the slowing metabolism. Your metabolism is what helps turn the fuel in the food you eat into the energy you need to drive everything you do, from sitting to moving to thinking. Many people relate metabolism to one thing, how easily their body gains or loses weight. A person with a slow metabolism will likely gain weight more quickly than someone with a high metabolism, all other factors being the same. As you've gotten older, you've probably noticed a natural slowdown in your metabolism, this is common. According to the Mayo Clinic, as you get older, muscle mass tends to decrease, slowing down your metabolism. The bottom line is this. If you continue to eat the same amount of calories as you did when you were younger, you may gain weight. Counteracting the slowing metabolism takes a lot of work, but it can be done. First, you need to have an understanding of your changing calorie needs. The chart on your handout from the National Institute on Aging may help you figure out how many calories you should be consuming each day. To use it, match up your gender with your activity level. For example, if you're a 65-year-old woman who is somewhat active, you'd need approximately 1,800 calories per day. In order to make sure you are eating the right amount, you may need to count calories Count the calories you're eating and drinking for a few weeks. You can do this in a variety of ways by keeping a written food journal and calculating your calorie intake manually or by using an online calorie tracker. Online calorie trackers are easy to use and can give you lots of information like a breakdown of the nutrients you've used and a fancy display of what you're eating each day. Plus, many of them are free. Then you may want to adjust your caloric intake. Staying within your calorie limits can definitely help prevent sneaky weight gain as you age, but you also need to consider where those calories are coming from. Since you may be eating less calories than before, it's important that you choose the most nutrition food, nutritious foods out there. So focus on getting lots of brightly colored fruits and vegetables with whole grains, protein, and healthy fats. Another thing that can help is to be active. According to the Mayo Clinic, aerobic exercise like walking, bicycling, dancing, or swimming burns calories while you're doing it. Strength training, which are exercises that help you build muscle, such as lifting weights or using the strength machines at the gym, can boost your metabolism and help offset some of the metabolic drop-off that happens with age. Of course, you should always talk to your doctor before making any changes to your diet or exercise routines.
let's move on to the next change you may face as you age, your changing senses. Many people think that weakening taste buds account for a diminished ability to taste food, but your sense of smell actually plays a role too. Your tongue has thousands of taste buds and taste receptors that give you the ability to detect five different tastes, sugary, salty, sour, or acidic, bitter, and savory, or also called umami which helps us taste things like fatty meat, seafood, and aged cheese. Each taste bud is equipped with several different, several receptors that directly send signals to the brain. Food also releases aromas that engage specific nerves in your nose called olfactory nerves. These smells combine with the taste sensed by your tongue to help you enjoy your food. Your taste buds don't actually weaken as you get older but they do decrease in size and number. According to the National Institute of Senior Health, you're born with about 10,000 taste buds, but but people start to lose them after age 50. Unfortunately, sense of smell may also begin to wane after age 70 because nerves in the nose start to deteriorate. Besides age-related sensory changes with taste and smell, there are a few other things that can affect your ability to taste food. Nasal and sinus problems like nasal polyps, allergies, and sinusitis, dental issues such as abscesses, tooth decay, and poor dental hygiene, neurological conditions such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, which may cause which may cause in their early stages, side effects of medication like and pills to lower cholesterol and blood pressure. The bottom line is that the loss of your senses is permanent and you're more likely to overdo the salt and reach for sweets more often according to the National Institute of Senior Health. This can be a big problem for people suffering from conditions like high blood pressure and diabetes. In addition, the National Institute on Aging reports that loss of taste can also lead to weight loss and malnutrition, a weakened immune system, social isolation, and depression. You may find yourself adding more salt and sugar to compensate for your loss of taste. Try to find healthier ways to add flavor to your foods. Try to stay below 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. The United States Department of Agricultural Dietary Guidelines recommend people over the age of 51 try to keep their sodium intake below 1,500 milligrams per day, which is equivalent to about two-thirds of a teaspoon of salt. To really see how much salt you're using, it may help to use a measuring spoon or shake salt into your hand rather than directly adding salt from the salt shaker. Experiment with herbs and spices. On your handout, we've provided a list of foods and the various seasonings that will work well with each one. You can also add flavor in other ways like using a small amount of cheese or nuts. Try new things to see what turns your taste buds on. Limit added sugar to six six teaspoons per day for women and nine teaspoons per day for men. This recommendation from the American Heart Association will help you rein in your sugar intake. Choose foods that are naturally sweet instead of adding sugar to your meals or eating foods with lots of added sugars. Try to increase sweetness with naturally sweet foods like fruits, peppers, or yams. These foods will appeal to your taste buds and provide you with lots of nutrients at the same time, but it's still important to eat them in moderation. Engage your other senses at mealtimes. While your smell and taste may may be compromised, your other senses may be able to pick up the slack. Choose brightly colored foods to satisfy your eyes and use a variety of textures to keep things interesting. The final change that can alter how people eat is a changing digestive tract. According to Everyday Health's article, How Aging Affects Your Digestive Tract, the muscles in your digestive system become stiffer and weaker, making them function less efficiently. This can result in many digestive problems. Another common problem people face as they age is frequent constipation. This is often due to a poor diet that lacks adequate amounts of fiber and fluids or lifestyle changes like a lack of physical activity. 
You may also be managing specific health conditions and or using medications. These medications can have side effects that, are, that not only impact digestion, but also have negative consequences on appetite. The bottom line is that the various changes in your digestive tract can make your food choices more important than ever before. But there's good news. A healthy lifestyle may offer protection for your digestive system. According to Everyday Health page, 10 tips for better digestive health, there are a few basic things you can do to help your digestive system function at its best. Exercise may help. Exercise increases blood flow to all your organs, helps you to keep a healthy weight, and keeps food moving through your digestive tract. Reduce your stress levels. Stress can cause the digestive system to go haywire. Try to manage your stress by avoiding your stressors, exercising, and or doing relaxation exercises like deep breathing and meditation. Know your triggers. Ask yourself these questions. Do spicy foods give you heartburn? Do fatty foods give you an upset stomach? Do beans make you feel gassy and bloated? Figuring out what's causing your digestive issues can help you learn what to avoid in the future. Consider keeping a food journal for a few weeks to help you pinpoint pinpoint your triggers. Focus on fiber. Fiber keeps food moving through your digestive system. The USDA Dietary Guidelines recommend women and men age 51 and older aim for 22 and 28 grams of fiber per day, respectively. Fiber-rich foods include whole grains, vegetables, legumes, and fruits. If you need to add fiber, do so gradually. Stay hydrated. Water helps keep stool soft and easy to pass. Work with your healthcare provider to manage digestive problems. Talk to your healthcare provider about any digestive problems you're experiencing. He or she may be able to help you understand the cause and figure out a treatment plan. Next, we are going to move into our cooking demo. Hi, everyone, and thanks for watching. Today, we are making a berry and spinach smoothie, and this recipe comes from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And I love this recipe because we're getting a lot of good nutrition in it. We've got our fruits, we've got vegetables, we've got dairy. So it's really overall a really great recipe. It's going to fill you up because we have lots of fiber and it's so easy. So first thing, I will go over the ingredients. I've got two cups of frozen strawberries. I'm using lots of frozen fruits in this just because... They're easy, and if they're not in season, they're cheaper. So I've got my two cups of strawberries, a half a cup of frozen blueberries. I've got one banana. Now, you could use a banana that maybe you threw in your freezer. This banana was one that was getting a little mushy, and I probably wouldn't eat it just as a banana. So it's a good one to put throw in a smoothie. Then I've got my half kiwi, and I've got that sliced up. I've got two cups of spinach, and I know a lot of people get a little scared about adding vegetables to their smoothies, so I recommend starting with spinach just because it's a really good one to start with. It won't change the flavor of your smoothie, but it'll really give it some added nutrition. And then I've got one cup of fat-free milk. You could use whatever kind of milk you have on hand. And then I've got a half a cup of 100% apple juice. Now that's really important. We wanna make sure that that apple juice is 100% because we don't need all the extra junk that they throw into some of those. So this is a really easy recipe. We're just gonna throw everything in this blender and blend it up. So here we go. Now, if the consistency of this smoothie is a little weird, we could add some, um, whoops. We could add 
some ice cubes if we need to, but I think it'll be just fine. Yeah. All my spinach in there. I need to pack that down a little bit. And then get my liquids. So I've got my apple juice and my milk. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Okay, so I'm just going to get this lid on here. And here we go. All right, that looked so delicious. I hope you all give that a try. Um, we're going to end today's class with a quick review. So your eating habits can play a big role in how you age. Remember, you are what you eat, and to help you age well, you have to try to eat well. Age-related changes can change the types of foods you want and need. Your metabolism may likely slow down, meaning you may need less calories than before. There's no magic bullet to boost your metabolism, but eating less and moving more may help prevent weight gain. Talk to your doctor before making any changes to your diet. Older adults also tend to lose the ability to taste and smell, which can have a dramatic effect on diet and quality of life. You may need to adjust your diet to make up for the losses, but be careful not to overdo it on the salt and sugar. Your digestive system may experience shifts, so it's important to get plenty of fiber and fluids. Talk to your doctor and make other steps and take other steps to boost your digestion. Your digestive system goes through a lot of changes which make it less efficient, but following the tips we talked about may help your belly ha may help keep your belly happy. Excuse me. So remember, despite all the changes we talked about today, it's still possible to make healthy choices. You may just need to cut back on your calories, trick your taste buds, and make some tweaks for a healthy digestive system. Would anyone like to share a healthy change they're planning to make based on what you've learned? I will now also open it up for question and answer. Here are some references if you are interested in looking up any of the information that we talked about today. And I've got another page of those as well. And then we are going to move into question and answer. So if anyone wants to share a healthy recipe, a tip that they have, or has any questions about what we covered today, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope you all have a great day.